Hello, in preparation of, for my trip to Iceland in about a month, exactly a month, uh, I wanted to do a little bit of cold weather training to make sure that all my systems, I have a heater on board and ev everything works right. So about today, it's 5 degrees C, what is that, uh, that's about 40 degrees Fahrenheit. So it's a little chilly uh, and I just wanted to test the heater, does it work, how much energy does it use. Uh, so I'm going out to, a, <clears throat> to an anchorage uh, nearby, it's actually a mooring ball. I'm just going to spend the night on the mooring ball and make sure that I can stay warm and everything is okay in cold weather. And uh, one of the things I wanted to show you was that I'm going to take a mooring ball. I'm going to use this hook. I, I showed this in another episode and some people asked me, well, how does it work? And this one is made by Wishar, but there's, if you, if, you, if you Google mooring ball hooks or something like that, you'll find three or four brands. There's an Italian one, and uh, is it Lumar? I think Lumar makes one as well. And the way it works is you just tie your mooring line onto it with just a bowline, and then you, with just a, a standard gaff, you know, you, you push this into the hole there, and it opens up. You see it's open now. And then when I come up to the mooring, mooring ball, I just hook this around into the thing and I, and I pull out and it'll be hooked on. And then when I want to leave, it's just as easy when you want to disconnect this, you just push this back into the hole and it opens up and you unhook. So this is a really clever design. Uh, for picking up a mooring ball, especially if you're solo, <laughs> single-handed, those, all those operations that seem so easy for everyone else, it's a little more complicated when you're doing it by yourself. So I really like this, and I love it whenever I pick up a mooring ball for this. So, that's what I'll be using today. A great uh, YouTube series is one called How to Sail Oceans. I think that's how, you know, how to Sail Oceans by Kevin Boothby. And he has sailed completely around the world in a boat, a kind of a classic boat that uh, has no engine. And so what he demonstrates on his site from time to time is how he picks up buoys or goes into a marina uh, just under sail. So, uh, or into anchorages or sailing off uh, um, using his sails to help him uh, uh, weigh the anchor. So I thought I'd do that. I do this from time to time. Uh, was, is try to pick up the buoy today just using the sail. Um, it's kind of the very end of a man overboard operation. Uh, I'll give it a try and we'll see how it goes. I'm about... Okay, that's the buoy up there that I want to come into. To set up for this, I furled the Genoa and I actually dropped down to the second reef on the main to reduce the speed. That's the hardest thing with these big boats. My boat's 40 feet long and 10 tons. So it's hard to slow it down. It gets a lot of inertia. I'll so, try to uh, turn uh, face to the wind uh, just as I arrive, a little before I arrive, and coast up next to it and hook it. I obviously left the, left the mainsail as I come in. So I'm going to get ready for that. So the wind is now at 80 degrees, 6 knots apparent. 60 degrees apparent, and I'm doing 1.8 knots. I could probably hold that. I don't want to go any, certainly no faster than 2 knots when I hook it, because then I, I just can't stop it with my arms. 1.7 knots. Okay. I'm lifting the mainsail.
I left the mainsail <laughs> about 10 seconds early on that one. Almost didn't get it, but we're hooked up now. I've got a line over the sheet, that's no problem. So I'm not going to leave the hook on. What I'll do is pull it in and put a line through and not the hook. And actually double up that. I put two lines through. And uh, that's how, well, you know, it's, it's, it's not easy. And uh, that one worked out okay, uh, just barely. So Kevin is still the king of doing all that. If you want to see how to do it right, watch Kevin's videos. I have another candidate for Christian Williams' Tool of the Gods. One of my big frustrations was I've never been able to adjust the tension in my shroud lines and, uh, and my stays other than with tape measures and twanging it. And So I went out and I bought a tool this time. This is called, I don't know if it's pronounced loose or loose, but it tells you to set how to set the gauge exactly uh, or precisely. So the way it works is you just hook the the cable, the, the, the shroud line, like this, between the two rollers, and then you pull back on the spring, and here I'm reading 46. If I come down the scale of to read 46, I see that's 18%. That means 18% of the breaking load of the, uh, of the uh, cable. You're supposed to set these, the recommended setting is about 15%. Unless the shroud lines come back after the mast. So in my case the shroud lines, because the spreaders are on an angle, come back and they stay, they say set them between 17 and 20 percent. So I set them both at 18 percent. So a great tool. Now how accurate is it? It's a mechanical device. So it's only going to be as accurate as the spring is. Um, but uh, I feel <laughs> more confident than the old twanging method or stretching the cable using a tape ruler, or a tape measure. So, Tool of the Gods candidates. This year I'm going to be sailing with uh, two additional pieces of uh, safety gear that I didn't have in the past. I really didn't think I needed them. Perhaps I don't, but I just wanted to show them to you anyway. The first one is this. This is a sea anchor. And the mouth of that sea anchor is two meters wide. So I'd use that when the wind gets 40, 45 knots per persistent long and if I can't hit heave to and heave to in this boat very well in high winds, high seas. It just I've tried everything, it doesn't work very well. So I that's when I would use a sea anchor. I've also added three meters of chain to it uh, to weight it down a little bit. And the way you I use the sea anchor is I go up to the bow with two lines, throw it off, and uh, it would, with a two meter opening to it, it would certainly uh, probably stop me, you know, even the highest winds, just about stop me. And most importantly, what you're trying to do is keep the nose pointed into the seas and into the wind. So, uh, and you just sit out the storm that way. So, uh, hopefully I'll, I'll never have to use it, but at least I have it aboard now, in case things really go, uh, pear-shaped on me, then I'll be able to do that. The other piece of equipment I have on with me is this, much smaller. It's just a uh, simple sea drogue. The sea anchor, well, it's actually more of a drogue is how I would use it. And the reason I want this is as a, as a steering, emergency steering backup. I saw on Hilma Sailing, and these are YouTube sites, Hilma Sailing and Sailing Zero, they both had problems. Well, they lost a rudder. One of them lost a the rudder. The other one lost the uh, steering linkage. Uh, wasn't working anymore to the autopilot. So I, I need to be able to steer in those conditions. There's only so much you can do with uh, trimming the sails. So I would hope to drag this behind me uh, and uh, see how that works. So I'm going to give that a test today. Right now it's a fairly blustery day. Let me just show you this. Going too fast. I'm still doing over six knots. Let me check this out now. Yeah, I'm doing 6.3 knots, 20 knots of wind, 19, 20 knots of wind, and six knots speed over ground. That's too fast. So what I'm going to do is I'll put in a second reef, try to slow it down to between four and five knots, and then.
and then put out the uh, the drogue uh, sea anchor see how things work now I've got I've set it up I've hooked it up in midships coming back to a winch that's what I'm told you're supposed to do with these is bring them to the center of the ship there so that, so that that's where the best steering is available from and I'm just going to tie it to two uh, on either side a, a bridle made from my uh, spinnaker sheets so let me uh, put a second reef in here and slow things down a little bit and uh, we'll see if it works I've attached a retrieval line here as well hopefully that'll play out okay Okay, so it's deployed now. Uh, the yellow line is the retrieval line, so it's just tied to the back end of the uh, of the drogue. So it slowed me down now to it took a full knot off and maybe even a knot and a half, 4.3 to 3.3 knots. Uh, so now, now what I want to do is turn the I'm going to center the rudder. So the rudder is centered uh, and block it. So I'm blocking the rudder now. The rudder is blocked in center. Let's just see, first of all, will it hold this heading? Let me see if I can uh, crank in the line and make, make the nose come back up into the wind. This should be pulling it over, theoretically. Pulling it over to port. Now, is that going to make me turn to port? I have no idea. So you can see, it's gone way over to port. Does the nose come up at all? No. Now it's clearly, I tightened the, pulled in the port line. So the port line is, 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 it's directly behind the port, port side there. But, <laughs> it's not pulling the nose over at all. <laughs> it's good to learn these things under good <laughs> conditions here well I have to say that my first experience at trying to steer with just the drogue has not worked very well the one thing so I'll have to uh, study this a little bit more I was hoping that would do it but uh, it's not responding at all to when I let it out or tighten it up uh, I don't get any response to uh, it just it's just slow slows me down as all well. Which is not a bad thing either, but uh, anyway, back to the drawing board on this one. Now here's a feature that worked well, the retrieval line. And that's really important because when the storm dies down and you want to be, be able to move on, if the wind's still 30 knots, you're going to have a heck of a time pulling, pulling that in. With a retrieval line, you collapse the rear end of it and just pull it in. So that worked well. So to install the inner force stay, we had to build a special piece that, uh, let me turn the light on here, that would uh, prevent the deck from being ripped off. So we had to take out the whole front part of the, of the boat. The other side of this is where the anchor, uh, anchor chain bay is. So this part here was, was cast and there's cast iron, there's a, a stainless steel in there. And then this will slide up. This will marry up to, you see we had to make a mold so that this would match the upper ceiling there. 
and that's where it will sit is up in the in that space there so you can't just and then it'll be anchored on both sides it'll be anchored over there and over there uh, because if you just attach a deck fitting it'll rip the deck off uh, in high winds so it has to be very strongly either forward through the anchor anchor uh, well to the bow or to the sides you have to attach the uh, chain plate fitting um, or else uh, damage will occur. Uh, we've made some progress now so soon I will be sailing again. Well hello I've made uh, quite a number of changes to the boat uh, over the uh, the slow season here some visible not, some not so visible and I want to show you one of the very important ones here. I have installed it's known as a uh, Solent, the second sail on the inner forestay. This is a sail that's uh, meant for uh, being close hauled, running into the wind. And I really needed one desperately because my uh, Genoa wasn't really set out for that. This is technically not a Solent. I've turned downwind to try to minimize the noise of the wind here. So uh, forgive me for that. But um, the um, this is actually in French, it's called a Tanquette, which is slightly different than a Solent in that it overlaps the mast just very slightly uh, aft there. And the other option of, of instead of having a, a Solent or a Tanquette, is instead of hooking it, attaching to the mast just below the, Ge the Genoa, you can attach at the level of the spreader. And the advantage of, that's called a cutter rig, it's type of, uh, a cutter. The advantage of that is the sails are much lower, dry, uh, and, and that's always good to have the driving force down low. So they're much slower and you can actually run with both sails. You, you can put, put your your Genoa out and the cutter or whatever your head sail is out with the cutter sail as well. Um, I can do that only when I'm running dead downwind with the Solent rig that, that I've got. But it's a great sail. I've already been testing it quite thoroughly. Uh, doing six and a half knots at 35 uh, degrees apparent. Uh, you know, I've never ever done that before on this boat, so uh, it allows you to sail much closer to the wind, um, much faster. Uh, so, so Isabel is no longer a one note samba. I can literally play an entire concerto now. I've got all kinds of options with the sails, and that's a great feeling, gives me good confidence. I've got a Genoa with 47 square meters, I've got the Solent which is 25 square meters of sail, and I have a storm jib, which is eight square meters of sail. So I'm prepared for just about anything now. So, off to Iceland. 10 knots of wind, and 90 degrees to the finger. Always interesting. 